Hello everyone, welcome back to another Ashes to Beauty Artistry video. I'm your artist Karis Fizel, and in this process video I will be walking you through the creation of my latest mural. I did this project for a nonprofit organization which I've helped support over the past five years by giving a percentage of the art sales I make through my online gallery, art shows, and special fundraisers. This nonprofit, Blazing Hope Ranch, helps women who have survived human trafficking. They provide a safe place for these women to live and a Christ-centered program to help these women start a new life. The ranch also uses their rescue horses in their program for the women to connect with and care for. If you would like more information about this amazing organization, then please visit their website. This project was a labor of love and was only possible thanks to the people who donated money for the art supplies. Their contribution is greatly appreciated by me and the founders of the ranch, David and Jolene Haggard. All right, it's now time to jump into the painting process. Because this was my first time painting on a vinyl wall, I made the mistaken assumption that two base coats of black paint would be enough to prime the wall. Yeah, that did not work out. So after a day and a half of work, I had to start over because the wall was drying out, the paint faster than I could apply and blend it. I had to sand the whole wall with 200 grit sandpaper, then put two coats of primer and finally two coats of black paint. Thankfully, Joe helped by sanding the wall for me so I could conserve my energy. <laughs> like with my previous mural, I drew it out first in my sketchbook and then projected it onto the wall where I traced it out. This saves me a whole lot of time. I started painting the base color for the ground. I wanted this mural to have a calming effect, so I didn't want a lot going on in the image, which is why I went with a dark black background and soft lighting on the two subjects. Depending on the effect I want, I've found that the more colors I use to layer, the better the finished piece will be. So while yes, this horse is only going to be a white and gray roan, it doesn't mean I limit my colors to only black and white. As you can see, I've created a light lavender to use as a base for the lighter shadows, and later you will see me add two other colors to different areas on the horse as well. As I've mentioned in my previous video, eyes are one of my favorite subjects to paint and draw. For this piece, I wanted the focal point to be the horse's eye, so it was important that I spent time to best portray what I wanted this image to speak to the viewer through the softness, trust, and understanding in the horse's gaze. I also filled it with many intricate details, down to the reflection of his lashes in his eye, so it would stand out from the rest of the image. Now I am creating a light cream color to use as a base for the white areas of the horse. This will add soft warm undertones to his coat. Just a few more touch ups before adding a light gray coloring around the eye to further distinguish it. I found it's easier when painting hair to start with a dark solid base color and then add strands of various highlight to it to create the texture, which I will do later. After creating a deep blue, I add that to the darkest gray area of the horse for the final base color. Now I begin layering white over the warm tones. The color will still show through the white, giving the finished product more of an interesting intensity with the different hints of complementary colors. I did this project less than a month after my second leg surgery to fix my knee, so it was difficult to sit in a chair close enough to the wall since I was still recovering and couldn't bend my leg well. So most of the time I was laying on the floor to paint the lower areas of the wall or bent over painting upside down. You just gotta find what works for you when there's a hindrance. I'm mixing the base color for the girl's green shirt, a deep red brown for her hair, and a blue for her jeans. I would have liked to only have used three cans of primary colors for this mural, but the only green I could make with those was too muted. I had more of an emerald green pictured in my head, 
So I bought a special tube of paint for her shirt. The lighting in the office wasn't great at night, so the colors in the video aren't really accurate at the moment. I wanted to get all the base colors blocked out on the girl before calling it a day. The next day, I started layering the colors on her pants. I used a dry brush technique to create a fabric texture as I layered on the highlights. After adding a warm colored layer for the lighting effect, I paused my work on the jeans and moved to the boots. Of course, a quick break for a dramatic picture. After finally being able to mix the beautiful green color I wanted, I added it to her shirt. After layering more white highlights to the face, I began the detailed layers by creating the dappled roan markings with a dry brush. I started with small short brush strokes, being careful not to blend it too much as I went. Then I used bigger strokes to create more of a distinct pattern on his upper back and rump that will fade into the smaller markings further down his side. The tail would mainly be in shadow, but I still wanted a few strands of lighter hair to stand out towards the bottom. As some of you know, painting straight lines is always a challenge for me due to my constant tremors from cerebral palsy. This doesn't mean I try to avoid them, it just means I have to spend some extra special time working on them. I painted the legs pretty well on the first try without having to do too much cleanup around the edges though. Since I wanted this horse to be a larger breed, I added a little bit of feathering around his hooves to suggest he was part draft horse. There's never been a moment you were forgotten, you are not hopeless. Though you have been broken, your innocence stolen. I hear you whisper underneath. For the hooves, I layered a sandy brown over the gray base with horizontal strokes and then went over that with vertical strokes using a dark gray brown to make the hooves look natural. Now I'm going back to add another layer to the mane and forelock, finish blending out the neck, and then add the final layers to his mane. There is no distance that cannot be covered over and over. You're not defenseless. Moving on to the girl, I worked on layering the shadows on her face. For me personally, I like to make the shadow layer a dark red brown and then layer over it with the lighter skin tones to keep it looking realistic and slightly transparent, like actual skin. Now 
When I finished the skin, I began working on her hair and blocking out her braid. After adding one more blue layer to the jeans, I paint the details of the pockets and seams. Once I'm satisfied with how the hair base looks, I add the last layer with a small thin brush for the details. As a final touch, I create some shadows from the creases in her shirt, and it's done. For the last step in this project, David and Joe helped me cut and attach some wooden wall paneling to either side of the mural. As always, thank you for watching and visit my website to see more of my artwork and videos.